Well, this was um, this is a no-brainer for me, um, strictly because I, I think life is well lived when you honor your friends. And uh, in all my years of, uh, of buying guitars, I've only sold two instruments. Uh, and one was um, when I was 18 years old, I found this old D28 Martin Herringbone from 1942. And if you were a bluegrasser, you had to have a herringbone. That was the holy grail of guitars. And I had a newer Martin that wasn't very good. And um, so I found this guitar, and I went and I took the guitar that I had, and I traded this guy, and I gave him all the money that I had saved up for my whole life, for my college, for whatever. And I, I bought this old Martin, and I was dead ass broke. But I had this great guitar, and I still have that guitar today, 35 years later. And the only other instrument I got rid of uh, Bruce will love this, was a steel guitar. Um, <laughs> as I bought one, and I couldn't play it, and I was a frustrated steel player because the st strings were too close together for me to ever figure out how to gouge the right one. So that was really a mercy selling, as all my friends called it in the day. And uh, getting rid of these instruments is, is excruciating. You know, it's really tough for me because I'm, I'm not the kind of guy that bought them and sold them and tried to make money and... Um, all of that, I've never made a dime off a guitar other than playing it. So when I went in there and I saw Joe, and Joe was the first one I saw, and I remember we knew that Soundcheck was underwater, and um, that happened, I guess, on the Monday, but the whole weekend while the river was rising, who I was most concerned about was George and his shop down on 4th. And I was watching that water, and I was watching that water, and I said, God, please don't let that water go down there and get George. And and uh, the whole time, uh, this is why I guess I'm a musician, I never thought about the east side of the river. But that's where Soundcheck was, was on the east side of the river. So this whole weekend, man, I was sweating George's shop. And, and, uh, and then I got a phone call on Monday, and they said, did you hear about Soundcheck? And I said, oh, crap, I never even thought about the east side of the river. It'll flood too, genius. And... Uh, <laughs> And I was mortified because I had probably 150 instruments down in there. And uh, Amy saw the shock on my face and she came up to me and she knew I was just about to completely unglue, you know. And she looked at me and she says, just remember, all you need is one guitar to make a living. And that's true. And that put a great spin on it for me. And uh, I was watching the video when I first got in here, and I noticed a whole bunch of my guitars on there. And I went, oh, no, I'm going to lose that one. Oh, no, I'm going to lose that one, too. But I went in there, and I saw them all, and, and, and I know John feels the same way. These, these instruments, they're, they're our photo books. You know, a lot of people, when they say, if a fire comes, what are you going to save? Everybody says, my photos. I'm going to save my photos. And I looked in there on the floor and I said, well, hell, that guitar played that solo on that record. That one played the intro on that record. That one did this. And this one's special because it, um, it's the guitar I played. I have a picture at home of me and Roy Acuff. He's one of my heroes. And I was singing When I Call Your Name, first hit record I ever had. And Roy was standing like right here. And he has tears in his eyes. And I'm playing this guitar when, uh, when that picture was taken. And it's a really... That there's going to be a pretty, uh, pretty big piece of that photo gone now. But uh, this just gets down to the, the simple fact that I'm, I'm glad to be here and help my fellow musicians because I know they do it for me. So God bless. <laughs>